Okay. And uh, before we go further more into details, is it possible for every uh, audiences on this uh, room seven uh, on your camera so that we could take a picture before pre and post. <laughs> All right, pre and post. So, mohon semua. Siapa yang ada, tolong. Okay, Puan Hamira. Kita akan takat gambar, Puan Hamira. Okay. Alia Mustafa, would you like to share views of yours? Uh -huh. Okay, saya akan bilang. Oh, okay. So, sementara waktu, tunggu sekejap eh. Kita punya host ada problem sekejap. So, sementara waktu, can we hold up sekejap? So, uh, sebab ada problem sedikit. Okay. For a while. Okay, boleh eh? Nak bilang sampai berapa? Okay, saya hitung sampai 10. Pada 5 yang terakhir, anda boleh beri apa ni, uh, free cara anda sendiri, okay? Alright, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Terima kasih semua, terima kasih atas kerjasama anda. Alright. So before we begin, all right, please make sure that you up any all attendees maupun uh, presenter uh, fill in the link untuk attendant, okay? It's very important. Now if you tengok balik the inside our chat box, there's a link whereby kalau kata anda ada nak ubah tajuk pembetulan, pembetulan or you would like to adapt your punya co-author. You could see in the link, which is by Nur Aifah Abdullah Sani, that's the link. So the next link, okay, is by apa ni, TV Pastam atau Nur Hamira. The link that given by Miss Madam Nur Hamira itu adalah link kedatangan. So please make sure you see because saya dipahamkan kalau anda guru, dia akan dipakai ya untuk uh, tujuan pensijilan, tujuan anda untuk apa uh, kredit latihan anda serta juga untuk tujuan KPT, KPM ya, untuk cat kedatangan bagi yang mana bawa pembiayaan mereka lah. Alright. So, please make sure isi dulu ambil masa. Alright. Now, for everyone's attention, now, the presentation will take about 15 minutes, 15 minutes, where 12 minutes is allocated into presentations and another 3 minutes is for Q&A session. Now for Q&A session, whenever you have questions to ask, you should raise your hand, clicking the button to ask questions and the host will put you in queue. Berarti kan sebelum ni kita dah rehearsal, I've shown you posters yang mana macam mana nak buat. Those are using computers and those are using uh, phone. Now, for the 10 minutes into the presentation, I will ring the bell once. Dan bunyi bell dia akan berbunyi begini. Two minutes later, mencukupi 12 minutes untuk presentation. I will ring the bell twice. Then, kita akan proceed to Q&A session. For the Q&A session, it will be a, about three minutes and I will ring the bell twice. And then, we will need to proceed dengan next presentation. 
Now kita kalau boleh kita kena ikut masa lah ya kawan-kawan uh, because pagi tadi terlampau beranjak masa. Uh, so make sure calculate your time. I know uh, ini bukanlah orang kata apa ni pertandingan but it's very necessary lah untuk kita apa ni ikut masa ya. So without further ado I will call up on our first presenter for this evening session. Mr. Quid Voikat. He will be sharing with us his finding on his studies and title Keberkesanan e module Camp Bond 3D dalam pengajaran ikatan kimia dalam meningkatkan pengetahuan dan kemahiran visual ruang pelajar. Okay, the video will be played by our host. Okay, Puan Hamira, whenever you are ready. Okay. Tak dengar Puan Amira. Again, sorry. Sekejap ya. Eh. Tak dengar. No sounds. Sekejap ya. Yeah. Sekejap semula. Uh, sorry. Uh, Normalina, anda boleh dengar kan suara saya Normalina? Can you respond? Okay, good. Alright. <coughs> good afternoon, everybody. My name is Creed Wicke. And I'm currently a postgraduate student in science education from University Kebangsaan Malaysia. I'm teaching chemistry in Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Science at Kota Kinabalu Sabah for 30 years. Today, I'm going to present a paper entitled Campbell 3D E-Module Effectiveness in Enhancing Students' Knowledge of Chemical Body Concept and Visual Spatial Skills. How I can come up with this research is because the student difficulties to visualize the shape and structure of molecules in chemical body. Aside from that, there is also a research regarding the misconception of the first year chemistry and pharmacy course students of the actual diagrams of molecules due to the tendency to flatten the dash wedge representatives to visual projection framework structure, regardless of the differences in the spatial arrangement between the two forms of representation. Aside from that, there are also interventions using 3D models in presentation, which are able to improve the student performance. According to Hong and Wu, the 3D model representation presented virtually is much easier than the models in physical form. A meta-analysis done by Song Chan and Liu in 2016 about the effect of digital technology interventions, which are showing a moderate impact on students' learning achievement. There are also a research about the inability of the spatial visual stimulus in improving the student's achievement. According to Keener, Utah, and Cohen, the visual spatial skills also do disappear after the student learn, practice, or familiarize themselves with such chemistry topics. As illustrated in, the, in this figure, the development of the chemical Chembon 3D e model suggested in this study is based on constructivism theory, social learning theory, cognitive theory of multimedia learning. It is in the research that through this model, the student able to build the knowledge of chemical bonding by synthesizing the new experience through three-dimensional molecular visualization using module 
through the hands-on activities. In addition, this module also emphasizes the interaction between the students on the virtual models with the surrounding to achieve the desired learning outcomes. The integration of multimedia as a cognitive tool in this module helps the students to minimize the short-term memory loss while learning abstract chemical bonding concepts, choosing information, building relationship and mental models, thus promoting a deep learning while enhancing the student's chemical bonding concept knowledge and visual spatial skills. So these are the hypotheses in this research. Prior to this intervention, a pretest of the chemical bonding knowledge test and also the cordial spatial visual test of rotation administered to the treatment group and also the control group during the first week. Then the intervention were conducted by the teachers by teaching chemical bond topics to the treatment group using the CAM bond 3D e modules through the Google Meet in which the three-dimensional molecules were displayed via module. In contrast, the student in the control group learned a similar topic with conventional method using textbooks, the teacher's handouts, and also PowerPoint presentations that would display two-dimensional molecules. During the fourth day, the students from both treatment and control groups were administered with the test test of the both um, 3D chemical bonding knowledge test and also the Purdue Spatial Visual Test of Rotation. After that, the answer script for the pre and the post test are collected and evaluated by two experienced pre university chemistry teacher. And the result is these are the chemical bonding concept knowledge where we can see here the treatment group showing big difference between the pre test and the post test compared to the control group. And the same thing happens with the visual spatial skills, where the treatment group showing big difference compared to the control group. Thus, we can conclude here that the Cambon 3D E models give the positive impact on both chemical bonding concept knowledge and also the spatial visual skills. First, it's due to the model able to reduce the cognitive load and positively high impact students with the lower visual spatial skills. Second, this E model are more concrete three dimensional display of the shapes and the bond angle of the molecules. And the last one, it actually um, allowed active online learning happens throughout this intervention. Aside from that, the students' spatial skills significantly and pass the threshold of spatial skills, which are actually allowed them to set them up to enter and succeed in STEM disciplines, according to GO 2018. So the conclusion that I can make here from this research is, first, by integration of the web-based visualization tools, actually aiding the mastery of the ethical bonding concept that can be used entirely online. Aside from that, the teaching method can be extended to chemistry subject students in upper secondary school students, or four or four five, the matriculations, the the diploma and the bachelor degree in higher education institutions. Research on other digital visualization tools such as virtual reality and augmented reality in support of learning complex chemistry concepts aside from the chemical bonding such as reaction mechanisms and chemical equilibrium. So these are the references, and thank you for listening.
Wow. Thank you, Mr. Quit. That was a very, very compact and, uh, well, very interesting finding. Okay, so thank you very much. Well, let us give a round of applause to Mr. Vet for his uh, outstanding upper presentation. Thank you. All right. And then uh, to the rest of audiences, do you guys have any questions regarding his finding and his study? Wow, Mr. Quick, Mini, you punya terlampau kompak sampai semua orang faham apa yang you sampaikan. Eh? <laughs> but, yeah, but you know what? I have a question. This was uh, done, was it really because it was a necessary ataupun is it because are you furthering your studies now? This is one of the objective. Um, this research actually meant for my thesis. Uh, with oh, Prof. Yeah. Uh, Prof. Kandesan, who is also my supervisor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing this topic on uh, chemical bonding. Yeah. Oh, okay. Very good. Well done. Okay. So, uh, I don't think I have anything to ask because uh, uh, it's about chemistry. Luar bidang. Tapi whatever that you terangkan, I've seen. It's a good. You have potential. Um. If this really works on, do you have any orang kata planning on uh, pattern your punya method ke apa ke? Uh, are you planning anything with it or it's just going to stay in inside your book, inside your thesis then it's done uh, just like that? Yeah, thank you for that uh, insight. Actually, uh, the discussion between me and Prof. Kanisa, um, probably we can <coughs> Enhance, <coughs> sorry, enhance the module first before we can uh, pattern it, and then uh, uh, and then we can share to the schools uh, for all the benefits for all the institutions, especially in chemistry. So, uh, uh, how many your punya student as a sample you want to me? Okay, to achieve the normality in my studies, so um, you already <coughs> said uh, the students are. Uh, all together is uh, 100 and 100 over of students, which actually consists of the control group and the treatment group. But we divide it into uh, due to the randomization, so we make it into different group. So the end result we have is like 30 students in the treatment group and 49 students in the control group. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. All right, so. That said, I guess others. Oh, other so alright. Sorry. Uh, apa ni? Nadia Richard is asking. Uh, is it possible, uh, Puan Nadia? Can you ask him himself? You can just unmute yourself and ask Mr. Quit. It seems like everyone is interested in your studies. Okay. Okay. Miss Nadia, you can ask him yourself. You can unmute myself. Can unmute. All right. Host. Boleh tak ke host? Okay, hello. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello, yeah. We can hello. hear you. Good day. Hi. Yeah, very good morning. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Quid. <laughs> I'm morning. here to yeah. support you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I'm interested to look um a little bit um can you give us a teaser of how your module look like okay thank you thanks for the question <laughs> Nadia. basically um the research um because i started up this research before the pandemic happens so which is actually that time the research actually meant to be done um in the schools uh which the session can be can be done for the face-to-face -face, uh I mean, like face to face within the teachers and the students, but somehow the pandemic is uh, suddenly come in the middle of the research. So I actually turned uh, 360 degree to change the module uh, to become e module. 
So what I did is, um, for, instead of like the student actually doing it in the classroom with the computer, but actually we, we changed it into the Google Meet session where again, uh, I was challenged, challenged because of the discussion supposedly they will done in groups, which is much easier uh, in during the face-to-face -face session rather than online. But I'm thank God uh, able to uh, overcome that challenges when we do the breakout rooms where, uh, where the student do really have some discussion uh, during the activities because this the activities in this module we actually um, integrate also inquiry based learning for chemistry because all this while chemistry we found from through the survey that we did most of the teachers still applying the memorization in which is Mr. Quit. yeah Mr. Quit. Yeah. What Miss Nadia is uh, asking, is it possible? Can you show us evidence of e whatever e learning? Apa yang yeah. you kata tu e model? Just show yeah. us aja. Ah uh, itu. Yeah. Okay. So I need we to share the see. screen, is it? Ah uh, no need. Ada oh. ke dalam you punya computer? You just share saja. Um, you can share. You know, I need to share, is it? Right now because I'm you. I'm. I need to share my screen, is it? Yeah, yes, of course, you ah, need okay. to share because you're not going to Yeah, definitely, I can show it. Hold on, ah. it's okay, guys. Miss a quick because your punya study is very interesting. That's what we oh. wanted to see. Ah, uh, yeah, um, pula, you took up, you got you took up E, so we wanted to see lah. <laughs> okay. I need to find the documents first. I'm not ready with that actually. Okay, okay, tak apalah. Photo uh, je? Photo breakout yeah. session ke apa ke kan? Oh, photo definitely. Ah. Uh, ah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Just nak tunjuk apa activity you buat. Hello, Miss. Hello, Puan. Hello, yeah. Uh, can I have a short question, please? Yes, of course. Yes, of okay, course. Sir, sir, I'm, I'm from sure. a very, quite a remote school from Sarawak, Kuching. Huh? So okay. I've seen it. Uh, it looks um, high tech and all that. So I'm looking more for my local scenery. Can you suggest a very simple three D module on, uh, let's say, organic chemistry, right? How to build besides using all our, you know, ping pong ball, fish ball, anything you have come across new. This is a kampung school. They only <laughs> can find yeah, what is around us. Not yeah. anything on the ICT. I mean, real, 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 real stuff to hook and attach. Okay. Boleh share sikit kan? Supaya budak saya pun boleh jadi pintar sikit. <laughs> Alright. Actually, um, for, yeah, it is, I also thought of that, actually. That's a very good thing to ponder. But um, for my research, actually, I, I was focusing, focusing on the urban area. So... I mean, yeah. For this, uh, for my method, in this E module, it's actually, uh, it imp uh, it's imp it really improved the students' uh, results for the urban student. So I haven't uh, did it to the rural area students. But again, from my experience of teaching chemical bonding with the rural area students, the most basic thing that are uh, most easiest thing to get actually probably we can use some dough maybe. Some little dough to make such a uh, roundish yes, thing. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, because if you use uh, stone, the shape is not circle as in the molecule itself, it has spherical. Right? So maybe using dough so they can do, do uh, some dough like plasticine, something homemade, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I can help. And then they really use fruits, they like, main, main dengan buah. No, there's a kampong. Look good, uh, rambutan, and, and you know lah, what is around yes, yes. the house, that's what they will, uh, so it is there, so I'm thinking whether maybe with your knowledge, you could have something very, very different, but yeah. I think I've got the idea from you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, at least I can share a little bit more with my kampung boys. I'm from Smatan. Okay, nice to meet you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for your sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Okay, Buan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It's okay, Miss Kui. Kui, uh, yeah. sebab you nak kena cari apa semua, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm it's okay. for the document, actually. Okay. I think, apa ni, Miss Nadia, 
Richard sama macam saya tak apalah we understood you came up with a model and then you exchange into e model yeah. so very good but just if boleh nampak lagi sedap lah kan tapi it's very good it's a very good thank you very much for sharing you know thank you probably um this research also just accepted by the journal scopus index ah, wow yeah. wow alhamdulillah that's yeah, very thanks, good God. after that's like good. three months of awaiting so actually, yeah. they finally accepted our publication. That's very, very good. Tahniah, tahniah, Mr. Kut. Yeah, my credit to my supervisor, Prof. Kamisa, as well, actually. She Definitely. Definitely. Okay, good. Thank very you. good. That's a very good finding. Okay. So without further ado, let's move on to our second presenter, which is Puan Nur Marina Abdul Rahman. She will be sharing with us her studies entitled Measuring Mathematical Communication Skills of Junior Secondary School Students. Without wasting time, our host will be playing the videos. Thank you, Doctor. I'll be uh, present uh, today using pre-record video. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. I am Nur Marina Abdul Rahman from Sultan Idris Education University under supervision of Professor Dr. Siti Asia Mokshin and also Dr. Hisham Muddin Ahmad. And today I'm going to present our research with title Measuring Mathematical Communication Skills of Junior Secondary School Students. As introduction, here are the review of Mathematics Secondary School Standard Curriculum, which emphasize more to mathematical process. This demand teachers to implement process in mathematics learning and teaching. So to ensure that they are not too mechanical. Students are also expected to have deep and meaningful understanding of mathematical concepts. So what is mathematical process skills? Students with these skills should be able to process information to find the connection, then represent their ideas, communicate about their solution, practice reasoning, and of course, solve the problems. But for today's presentation, we will only focusing on mathematical communication skills for further explanation. Language and communication are important elements in the learning process, including in mathematics. Students who have mastered mathematical communication skills are more active in seeking and obtaining explanation. Effective communication requires an environment that is always concerned about the student's need to be comfortable to speak, inquire, answer questions, and explain a statement also justify their opinion to their classmates and also teachers. This only happen in a learning environment that encourage communications among students, such as asking questions or situations that open space for interaction. But for students with poor mathematical communication skills, they will face trouble explaining their thoughts unable to justify which relevant and does not see feedbacks as valuable takeaways. Previous studies are focusing more to qualitative methods such as interviews or small group observation. Although this kind of methods will give deep understanding to the researchers, but it can't be administered to larger scale samples. Therefore, it can provide data for general intervention. 
The purpose of this study was to identify the mathematical communication skills that students need to improve. For this, two objectives were constructed. That is first, to assess the rubric validity, to measure the students' abilities, and two, to determine the level of students' abilities against item difficulties for students' mathematical communication skills. We go through previous studies, documents, to not just understanding the issues, but also to observe methods used and instruments involved. So, through review, we found that students with mathematical communication skills can use correct mathematical terms and symbols, explain their mathematical ideas, analyze other student strategies, and also write correct numerical answer with units. We use survey method in this development and validation research. A sample of problem solving and reflective writing tasks were developed along with a scoring rubric with five criteria and four points category rating scale. There are seven writers appointed to score students' response. All data were analyzed using many facet brush model. The task was constructed to give students opportunity to demonstrate and practice their mathematical communication skills. The task instruction will construct based on called reflective cycle, which is concrete experience, reflective observation, abstract conceptualization, and active experimentation. And here are the sample of task instruction used. In this task, students are not just asked to answer the problems given, but they are also required to explain the how, what, which, and why of the answer. Students' maths communication skills were measured based on their response in sample of problem solving and reflective writing tasks. And here are the criteria and descriptors for the scoring rubric use. All data were collected through panel evaluation and also focus group survey. We also developed a writer's judging plan to ensure that each student will be judged at least by two writers. And here are the findings of this study. Through expert evaluation, in two phases with nine practitioners and professionals involved. We got content validity ratio value range between 0 0.8 to 1. And here are the samples of students' response arranged based on the COP reflective cycle. Both instruments not just had high content validity ratio, but also indicates good construct validity based on the RASH model analysis. The RASH analysis to assess quality of scale levels were also conducted by determining if there is any hierarchy in the scaling categories. Besides, the spacing size between scales was observed in which the ideal value is between 1.4 to 5. The values that less than 1.4 or more than 5 indicates that the respondents are unable to differentiate between categories. Level of students' communication was determined by mapping facets of students' abilities against item difficulties on the variable map. There are only about 1.2% of the students at the excellent level, 
to achieve high scores of all criteria of communication. This is followed by 35.8% of students who were at a good level and mastered two out of five criteria. 53.7% of the students were at the average level. And the remaining quite a huge number, which is 9.3% of students have a weak level of communication skills in which they did not score much for the criteria observed. Based on the five criteria, it was found that more than 90% of the students involved were able to use next terms and symbols effectively, while only about 37% of the students were able to write their digits answers correctly with units and explain the idea and well analyze other strategies in the task given. The research findings conclude that the rubric has good psychometric characteristics based on rush analysis. The majority of students involved were identified to have a good and average level of mathematic communication skills. The criteria that were poorly mastered by students based on items difficulty could be used to plan appropriate intervention and guidance. Future research should consider using this rubric in various organizations to assess the strength and weakness of students at various levels. This could be done by using different dimensions and adaptation of the task according to the student's level. Students inability to explain personal idea nor analyze others' action should be intervened and overcome to improve their learning and mathematical communication levels, thus elevate their performance in mathematics. May this research be an addition to the collection of research about instrument design and validity based on rush model analysis and research about students' mathematical communication level. And here are the article published in journal, ebook, and also proceeding from this research. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, Puan Nur Marina, for the uh, very interesting finding on your studies. Uh, so let's just give her a round of applause. Okay, for the outstanding. Uh, now, does anyone has any question to ask Puan Marina regarding about her study? Tak ada? Oh, I guess Puan Marina, you terang very smooth, very compact. Eh? Very good, Puan Marina. Saya pun sendiri tak ada soalan nak bertanya sebab terang betul. Now, bila you kata secondary school student ni, Puan Marina. Yeah. What do you mean by secondary apa ni school student? Berapa orang sample you guna? Okay, uh, this is uh, actually uh, from the uh, my um, PhD research. So okay. uh, from the main study, the actual studies uh, involve uh, more than mathematical, uh, mathematical communication skills. It's actually about ma mathematical process skills. So I uh, cover all five process, including mathematical communication skills. So these uh, studies um, uh, were administered to 407 from one students uh, from uh, fully residential schools. Okay, all right. Okay. So, kira, yang ni kalau kata tajuk ini, form one, you kata form one? Daripada form berapa ni? Form one, yeah. Form, form one. one. Oh, form one. Okay, all right. Okay. So, dah nak habis ke study you? Uh, actually, uh, I've passed my viva last month. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, it's uh, it's done. So just now, uh, focusing on correction to submit the hard uh, hard cover. Oh, 
Ini untuk apa? PhD ke Masters? PhD. PhD. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Alright, this is very, very good, interesting. Okay, without further ado, let's uh, let the presenter, our third presenter, which is Puan Siti Nadira bin Nordin. She will be sharing. She will be sharing. She will be sharing with uh, her findings on study and title, enhancing student achievement in subtopic immune response using IRA card game, which is regarding about immune response card game. So, without further ado, uh, kita akan mainkanlah your apa ni presentation. So, whenever Puan so, Hamira is ready. Assalamualaikum and good evening everyone. My name is Siti Nadira Nordin. I'm from College Matriculasi Selangor. Today I would like to present my action research and the title is Enhancing Biology Student Achievement in Subtopic Immune Response Using Iris Card Game, also known as Immune Response Card Game. Immune response is one of the subtopic in the topic of immunity for matriculation level. So the issue here, the prior knowledge of the students are still insufficient, facilitate them to understand and mastering the subtopic of immune response. To solve this problem, the lecturer have developed an innovation named Iris Card Game. Iris Card Game is a simulation of the human immune response to bacteria and viruses. It introduces students to the concept of cell-mediated and humoral immune response. Can be played in a relaxed condition to enhance student motivation. Iris Card Game has favorable characteristics to be used in STEM as a tool to enhance learning and also can make teaching and learning become more relevant nowadays. Therefore, the purpose of Iris Card Game was used as a teaching strategy to enhance the student understanding who took biology course for the immune response subtopic. Based on the lecturer's self-reflection, the lecturer faces difficulty in explaining creatively in strengthening student understanding related to the immune response subtopic. There is no specific teaching aids to help students understand the event that occur in immune response. This is evidenced by the diagnostic test conducted on students that is 62.5% of 40 students fail in this test. From other aspects, based on laporan kerja calon from peperiksaan semester peringkat matriculasi 2014-2015 stated that candidate misunderstand concept and do not understand terms such as APC, helper T-cell, cytotoxic T-cell in response to cell immunity. And some candidate lost marks for not providing the correct sequence of event for cell-mediated immune response. Other than that, from bengkel kerja pemantapan penyampaian isi kandungan dan pembelajaran bagi mata pelajaran biologi, matematik dan sains komputer stated students have difficulty to relate humoral immune response with cell-mediated immune response as well as the role of helper T-cell in activation both responses. Reflection from the students, the lecturer obtained responses from several students to ascertain the real reason why they were less interested, did not pay attention while in the class and failed to complete the tutorial questions. The following are partial display of students' responses. I'm confused, madam. What are the differences between cell-mediated immune response and humoral immune response? I've asked my friends to explain about immune response, but when I want to write an AC, I'm not sure which content is important. I've tried to memorize the cells involved and its function in the immune response, but when it comes to answering quizzes and questions, I can't remember them all. In conclusion, students were not able to list the cells involved in the immune response and the functions of each cell to describe the events that occur in the correct sequence in the immune response. To distinguish between two types of immune response, which are cell-mediated immune response and humoral immune response. The focus of this study is to help the four-semester system or SES students who took biology course in College Matriculasi Selangor. Mostly, they are weak students. Students find it difficult to understand the correct sequence in each event that occur in the immune response. So it becomes a challenge for the lecturer to explain this important concept. 
Therefore, Iris Card Game is an activity to solve learning problem of the immune response subtopic. This approach was chosen because it allows the teaching and learning environment to take place in a relaxed condition. Other than that, Iris Card Game is hands-on activity. While students playing the card game, this will optimize students' involvement in discussions on the immune response subtopic, thereby improving students' understanding of this subtopic. Besides that, the cards in Iris card games are colorful, so it can attract students to the game and it can identify the cell component involved in the immune response. The objective of the study are divided into two. General objective to increase the understanding of DB024 KMS students on the immune response subtopic through the use of Iris card game, which in turn increase students' achievements. And the specific objective for this study are 80% of the students can list down the cells involved in the immune response and the function of each cell. 70% of the students are able to describe events that occur in the correct sequence in immune response. And 80% of the students are able to distinguish between two types of immune response, namely cell-mediated immune response and humoral immune response. The target group of this study consists of KMS students taking biology course DB024 SES program session 2019-2020. For the students from two practicums, D1M1 T2 and D1M3 T2. 70% of these students obtain grade C and D for SPM year 2019. The selection is based on the lecturer's observation in terms of quiz performance of students who get low marks in class at the beginning of the semester. The diagnostic test is a preliminary survey to detect the extent of students' understanding of the immune response subtopic based on conventional teaching and learning method. The questions consisted of 20 objective questions using the Google Form application. Questions according to Bloom's taxonomy level based on biology curriculum specification provided by BMKPM. The analysis of diagnostic tests that have been implemented and found that 62.5% of students fail in this test and only 7.5% of students get A grade. Based on the flowchart, shows the implementation of action iris card game begin by construction of the material in iris card game, followed by construction of pre-test and post-test questions, then conducting pre-test and the target group and data collecting. Continued with implementations of iris card game in teaching and learning of immune response subtopic. Finally, post-test was conducted and data were collected for analysis by the lecturers. These are the materials in the box of Iris card game. It have game cards consist of cells that involve in immune response, instruction and guidelines, and also there is a body bag representing the individual body. Other than that, the box consists of coins and paper clips. Since Iris card game consists of two types of simulation, which are humoral immune response and cell-mediated immune response, so this is the simplifications of the instruction for humoral immune response. And this one is the simplification instruction for cell-mediated immune response. Data collection methods begin with the construction of pre-test and post-test questions, which uses the same set of questions. It was restructured from the PSPM questions according to the suitability of the study's objectives. There are two structured questions that give total 20 marks. Students must answer within 30 minutes. The target group answer the pre-test before playing Iris card game and answer the post-test two weeks after playing Iris card game to find out the improvement of students' understanding. From the analysis of pre-test and post-test show that the percentage of students excelling the post-test increased by 42.5% compared to the pre-test, while no student failed in the post-test. This indicates there was a very positive improvement in students' understanding of the immune response subtopic after playing Iris card game. Next, the finding from the data analysis found that for the first objective was achieved because overall, over 80% of the students were able to list down the cell involved in the immune response and the functions of each of those cells. 
Also, the second objective of the study was achieved because overall, over 70% of students were able to describe events that occurred in the immune response in correct sequence. And the last one, the objective was also achieved because over 80% of students are able to distinguish between two types of immune response. The changes that can be seen as the result of this study through the angle of student achievements are percentage increase in post-test indicates student achievement increase after playing Iris card game. The excellent category increased 42.5% and the weak category decreased 55%. Increase the understanding of this concept as it's a hands-on activity. Student so able to describe the correct sequence in each event that occur in the immune response. Make student thinks actively during the interaction in group when playing the card game. Teaching and learning activity will be more interesting and flexible. As for the lecturers, it develops a close and professional working relationship when good interaction and communication in generating ideas has a positive impact on students' achievement. In addition, provide high job satisfaction and strengthen the professionalism of teachers. From the aspect of the strength of the study, Iris Card Game encourages active learning because it is student-centered. Cards are colorful that can attract students to the game. The use of pictorial instruction helps students describe events that took place more organized. This can improve students' memory. As it's a hands-on activity, it can develop student skills such as critical thinking. There are some suggestions for improvement for this study in the future. A risk card game should involve other suitable topics in the biology course. The approach can be disseminated to other institutions to get maximum impact to improve the result of this institution. The study that has been conducted helped the lecturers address the problem of students to understand the immune response subtopic. A risk card game implemented during the teaching and learning process successfully improved students' outcome. Most importantly, overall, over 70% of the students were able to describe events that occurred in immune response in correct sequence. Before I end the presentation, I would like to thank my group members, Puan Anizak Bubaka, myself, Puan Siti Nadira Nordin, and Puan Ruzia Omar for pulling their way in completing this study. With that, thank you for listening. Assalamualaikum and good evening, everyone. My name is Siti Nadira Nordin. Okay. Thank you very much, Puan Nadira. For me, when uh, you say puji lah. You put your slide so kalau you mengajar macam tu memang fully understand. <laughs> slide tu memang betul-betul cantik, elok. Lepas tu macam mana you boleh tampal gambar you dekat situ. Keadaan bulat, dia elok macam dalam mirror gitu kan. So it's very nice. Kena belajar tu teknik dengan puan ni. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the card sounds interesting because you kata it's a apa ni, a problem for students in matriculation regarding immune response kan. I guess my students also have the same problem jugalah of understanding apa tajuk bahagian tu. Okay. Have you ever thought of apa ni, pattern kan produk oh. you ke? Macam mana? Dah, dah ada pattern kan dah. Oh, you dah pattern dah? Ah, uh -uh. Alright, uh, okay. Last two years lah. Uh. Oh, last two years. Uh -huh. And then, is it implement dekat matrikulasi you ajar je ke or overall? Ini soalan uh, saya lah. Oh, uh, untuk yang, untuk college uh, memang pakai lah. Untuk yang college lain tu sebab saya buat macam inovasi punya event pertandingan ke apa, saya sharing kat situ lah. Lepas tu kalau ada college uh, macam apa, apa changing to intervention, so saya tunjuklah saya punya Uh, intervention ni kat diorang. Macam tu lah, sharing macam tu lah. So, uh, ini projek tiga orang anda lah? Uh, 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 projek kami tiga orang. Uh, okay, so kawan-kawan uh, adalah dalam ni uh, hadir bagi sokongan? Oh, tak ada. Sebab diorang pun tu. ada uh, presentation untuk yang ada event. Masing-masing so, <laughs> ada. Oh, okay. So, masing-masing uh, ada part masing-masing lah. Uh. Okay. Alright. Um, So thank you very much Puan Nadira Nordin. So okay. saya nak tanya boleh? Okey, jemput. Okey, Puan daripada matrikulasi. Ya. Yeah. 
Okey, uh, apa yang ditunjuk tadi, adakah diimplement masa kita face to face ataupun dia buat masa kita dalam pandemik ni? Ya, ah, uh, yang ni sebab saya tak boleh uh, uh. sebab ni saya buat tahun sebelum pandemik. Ah, uh, so sebab masa pandemik sebab dia pakai hands on kan, dia tak boleh nak buat um, dalam dalam masa dalam apa dalam uh, virtual lah sebab dia pakai hands on. So kami tak ada lagi met tak 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 pada lagi nak buat dia, dia jadi macam virtual card game macam tu. Uh, hmm. Mungkin nanti kami akan cuba lah buat benda tu. Hmm. Mungkin bila dalam keadaan pandemik ni, saya rasa yeah. dia banyak mengajar kita untuk kita tukar kita punya. Uh. Uh, Cara tadi tu ke arah virtual lah. Mungkin kita boleh menghasilkan teaching key dalam bentuk apps kan. Menggunakan uh, secara online. Sebab benda tu tadi menarik. Cikgu dah hilang dah. <laughs> ah, dah terkeluar. Daripada matrikasi okay. mana tadi? Uh, Sangor. Sangor, okey. Uh, uh, so. kan? Menarik. Tapi sebab tu saya kata kita sekarang challenge je mana-mana uh. pun. Kan kat sekolah, uh. dekat matrik, atas sasi. So macam mana kita bila pelajar tu bukan depan mata kita dan kita nak ajar benda tu secara virtual lah. That's the challenge. Mungkin sekarang kita uh. kena tukar cara tu lah. Yeah. Sebab benda ni saya buat sebelum memang betul um, sebelum pandemik tu. So memang tak ada lagi tak jumpa lagi bahan untuk dia jadikan virtual learning lah. Uh, yeah. uh, guna Memang boleh guna lah. Selalunya buat uh, sebelum ni kita ambil buat kat dalam kelas kan during face to face. Bila free time dalam lab. Uh, so dia orang boleh hands on lah. Sekarang ni mm -hmm. kena, kami kena cari lah uh, apa dia punya uh, base untuk buat game ni lah bagi jadi online games. Oh ya. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Alright. Terima kasih. Okay. Promenade Dr. Laili ya. Itu soalan dia. So itu antara improvise, improvisasi, improvisasi ah, okay. yang puan buat kan lah. Okay. Alright. Thank tambah. you very much. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. So round applause to Puan Nadira Nordin. Alright. Uh, Let's move on to our second last presenter, which is Puan Nur Shahida binti Abdul Rahim. She will be sharing with us her studies on uh, entitled Web Simulation and Physics Practical Hybrid. Okay, Puan Shahida can share sendiri. Okay, whenever you are ready, Puan Shahida. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Hear me? Yes, <coughs> we can hear you loud and clear. Right. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and afternoon to my fellow academician. Okay, uh, so today uh, my name is Nur Shahida binti Abdul Rahim. I'm from Pusat Asas System, uh, UMT. Okay, and then my uh, research or sharing this evening is about the web simulation and practical hybrid or in short we sapi okay so um let's start with a few introduction okay and uh, we know that when we do the practical uh there are several methods we uh, we use uh as the in uh traditional method so we know that face to face so face to face learning is uh is the interaction between um teacher and a student uh, by using the uh upper traditional classroom so technology may be used or not be used in this uh learning so this is the example when we have a face-to-face -face learning with our student okay and then since the pandemic um most of us move to the online learning okay so for the online learning, uh, nearly all the instruction, interaction and activity will be, be, will be take place online. Okay, and then for online learning, we can divide into synchronous learning. So synchronous learning, uh, this is when we do our class, a live, live uh, present or sharing session with our student by using any of this platform, Google Meet, Zoom and also Webex. Okay, and sometimes we can use asynchronous learning. So asynchronous learning, if we have any um any assignment or task we give to our student, we can use any of this platform. Okay, all right. And then uh since the August August last year, we at past them able to bring back our student uh part of our student into campus. Okay, therefore 
what I uh, what I'm done or uh, what we done at this um uh, at past term, we try to implement this practical hybrid. Okay, so what is the practical hybrid with SAP method? We try to uh, blend or we merge the combination of face-to-face -face interaction with website simulation because some of the students coming to class in person, okay, because part of them already at our campus and part of them at uh, at their hometown, okay. And then students at home can respond in discussion in prom so they can obtain the same data with their colleague college at a uh, face-to-face lab okay and then uh, for this WSAP method uh, uh, it takes place two weeks okay for the first week we use this web simulation okay and for the web simulation me and my colleagues try to uh, to to use the various website and then we found that this website the WSAP uh, sorry the physicsavery.com has a various uh, lab uh, uh sorry lab simulator for physics okay and then we choose this one okay what we have when we click uh, the topic that we interest this is um this is the uh front panel okay and then as you can see at this front panel there are several uh instruction a simple instruction given and you just click this begin button okay and then after that uh, let's say if you try if you choose this topic the circular motion okay that's uh, this is what the website look like okay for example if you choose 10 circular okay you see here it will circulate and after that you just uh, click the pause button okay and then the ellipse time will show the um the reading the total reading okay and then after that uh when you uh after this web, web simulation and the next week okay and then then the next week we try to implement the practical hybrid okay what we do at the practical hybrid at the first place for those uh that come to campus with uh the instruction which is lecture we give uh, some brief uh a brief of introduction what we what about the experiment for today experiment and then after that um they are divided into a small group okay and then as you can see this is the view uh, a small group uh, part of them do the simulation face to face and while a part of them uh, will be at online at home okay and then this is from the point of view uh for for this exam. For, for what happened to the radius okay, so they the procedure to their friends at home okay and then this is the uh, the view from Okay, as you can see, if they have any question, so they So kalau kita lekat ke sini, so reduce dekat antara antara apa? Gabus ni dengan ujung ni akan fix lah. Faham tak? Itu lah. Okay. So this is the from the uh, point of view. Kita cari tiga puluh revolution. Dan tiga puluh revolution tu berapa? Saat dia boleh ambil Faham So macam sekarang ni 50 gram 50 gram So 50 gram ni Dia punya uh, Berat ni dia bagi separate tension tali ni So kita nak dalam eksperimen ni kita nak tahu Apa efek 
attention kepada masa yang diambil. Okay. Alright. Okay. So this is a uh, West Happy method, uh, which I uh, which we combine the practical hybrid um, between the face-to-face -face practical and also the one at home, the with the web simulation. Okay, and then mm, uh, the finding that we uh, get from uh, this method. Okay, so what is the uh, about hundred thirty six respond respondent answer for this um, question? So the existence of uh, um, the student, 59.6% uh, already at laboratory, while the rest of it uh, at hostel or at home. Okay, and then I don't know why they said the both. Mungkin hati di sini, badan di sana. Saya tak tahu <laughs> why they said di situ, yeah? Okay, next. Uh, uh, because we choose, uh, actually, uh, beside the physics library, there are various websites we can used to do the simulation of uh, physics practical. But I think um, this one is a most um, convenient and easy to use. So when we do the re uh, survey, so uh, most of the student agree with this statement lah, that the uh, website is user friendly. Okay, and then, um, okay, uh, we also ask them uh, the level of communication between uh, their friend uh, when conduct the hybrid practice. Okay, and then uh, most of them also agree that uh, the communication level is uh, is uh, quite higher because they can have um, two-way uh, interaction between their friend, although they are not at laboratory in face-to-face. -face. Okay, and then for the level of information from that experiment data, uh, eighty-two point four percent of a student able to get the information from the their friend at laboratory. Okay, and then um um beside that, what is the constraint of halangan that face when the when this hybrid session? So most of uh the the constraint is the internet connection. Okay, um not only us, but I think this is the around the world. Uh, internet connection play a crucial part to do the practical hybrid session. Okay, and then the next is device problem, time management, and uh, some of, of them said hard to understand, communication problem, sound problem, and also visual quality. Okay, and then um, is there any suggestion or comment from the student? So that's a positive feedback from uh, the student. So they said that this website is uh, easy to use. And because the data that we get, uh, that they get is the consistent data, okay, without any random error. So they don't, don't have to worry about the random error. Okay, and then they said that if this, this COVID-19 uh, continue, uh, they need to do the online learning. So they, they think this is the, um, the, good, um, the good method to um, proceed with this experiment. Okay, and then, um, other than that, there are some of the feedback for improvement because uh, as you can see for the first statement, the simulation is good but I prefer to do in laboratory because I'm more a practical student. Okay, we know that there are various of uh, students. It's either they are visual learner, uh, kinesthetic learner, auditory learner. So uh, as the instruct instructor or as a lecturer, we, know, we need to tackle with that type of student. Okay, rather than that, we have uh, they are uh, they have the internet connection, so we must cater with the with that problem. Okay, and then they said that if the practical habit using the Google Meet, uh, we can improve by using the breakout session for this type. Okay, and then um, uh, other than that, uh, we said we uh, we split them into small group, so the the student suggests to only one group of the lab session. So that there are no uh, inter interruption of the sound a student at home can uh, hear clearly. Okay, all right. All right, so before I ended my uh, sharing session, so millions thanks to my student, Kulia Tu from Cohort 3, and also my colleague, Mr. Muzami Fridas bin Abu Wakar. Okay, so okay. that's it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Puan Shahida. Alright. Kebetulan time pun sudah habis. Alright.
Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Puan Shahida. Uh, let's, let's give her a round of applause. All right. So, the rest of audiences, do you have any question that would you like to ask Puan Shahida or take into interest sebab dia amalkan hybrid? Ya, yeah, hybrid ni jarang kita dengar lagi lah antara tetamu-tetamu ataupun presenter yang baru terang tadi. So, hybrid, I guess in banyak-banyak apanya uh, presentation Puan Shahida yang gunakan hybrid. So, does anyone from any uh, school matriculations or association yang berminat, you can use this floor to ask her how did she use it? Does it really improve? Okay. All right. Brother, any question? Mr. Kui? Maybe dalam anda punya learning of chemistry, you might as well involve hybrid punya session with your students. Anyone? Sorry, what's the question just now? Uh, do you have any question? Yeah. Uh, not at the moment. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. So, nampaknya tak ada Puan Syahida. Saya pun sendiri tak ada. Okay, because uh, Puan Syahida is a colleague of mine <laughs> in UFD. Alright, okay. To Puan Syahida, hybrid my work in biology kurang sikit lah. It doesn't <laughs> really work macam fizik. So, thank you very much ya yeah, Puan Syahida. Okay. Kita bagi laluan dulu untuk azan ya. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sekejap ya. Yeah. Taifah. Uh, ada last presenter kan Wan Azri. Ya yeah, betul tapi kita bagi laluan untuk Azan dekat sini.
Belum habis lagi ni. Ha uh ah. -uh. Sebab dia stop azan. Ha uh -uh, tak apa. Oh. Oh, aku tak aku tak ada bro oh, saya tengah cantik cantik ni. <laughs> okay, ya, memang tak boleh juga eh. Terbalik. Walaupun uh, dekat dalam tu kan dia tulis mirroring tak ada ya kat punya tu. Kalau saya saya tulis saya so tulis mirror benda tu tak ada. Ya? Okay without further ado. Okay azan pun sudah habis berkumandang. Okay now we would like to uh, menjemput Mr Nazri. Untuk membentangkan apa ni perkongsi uh, tentang pembentangan beliau. So, Mr Wan Nazri, I'll give you the floor for you to apa uh, introduce yourself and the title that you'll be introducing to us. Alright. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Yes, very clear. So, I I share the screen right now. Ah, um, okay. I can share dulu Mr. Wanazri. Okay, thank you. Sekejap Mr. Wanazri, tunggu sekejap, tunggu sekejap. Alright, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening to all judges and participants of third I System 2020 International Conference in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Okay. My name is Ruhana binti Abdul Raza Elias. Boleh dengar tak suara? From SM Science Institute and with my partner. Wan Nazri bin Wan Ishaq Elias Wan Muhammad from SMKA Kuala Abang, Dungun, Terengganu. We're going to present our research on the easiest online learning channel to assess students' outcomes using the Snip and Sketch application. This is the problem statement of our research which is the students face difficulties in managing assignments from the teachers after the learning due to the memory space on the phone and the students also have the difficulties to loading the Google Classroom application as some of the students cannot remember their ID and email the limits. In addition, the teachers are difficult to check the students' assignments quickly and easily. The focus of this research is to assess students' understanding of teaching and learning at home, which is PTPR, with the method of the teachers check the students' assignment quickly and easily using the snip and sketch application on the Telegram channel. This is the student's problem. Number one is students experience difficulty using the new apps that require accounts and passwords. Accounts and passwords are very long and it is difficult for the students to remember. Number two is the new apps require a large memory space and some of the students have low budget that has a small memory space. And number three, the accounts and passwords provided to students are difficult to memorize and do not work on all applications. And now this is the teacher problem. Number one, not all the teachers can master functions buttons in an education application supplied because some of the teachers only know the basic function. 
Number two, teachers also have trouble checking assignments due to having to register for accounts and the teacher have to wait for various advantages in using the apps. Number three, teachers have many accounts and passwords that need to be memorized. So this is very difficult for them to manage the assignments of the students in structure. And last, number four, the process of checking the student's assignment using the phone is very difficult and uncomfortable. So the teacher have to use a better device to make sure that to make sure they can marking the student's assignment very well. This is the methodology of our research. First is solving for student. Second is solving for teacher. Solving for student, we use the application that is used by all the students, which is Telegram, as a medium of interaction between teacher and students for PBD, which is Pentaksiran Berasaskan Bilik Dakjah Assessment Work. Number two, students can snap a picture and then submit it to the teacher. And this is very fast and quickly for the students to submit their assignment. Number three, students can delete pictures of assignments in the phone memory, but they do not have to delete the picture in the telegram because all the information in the telegram is stored in the cloud. This is the solving for teachers. Number one is teachers will use the snip and sketch application to check the student's answer or the student's assignment. And number two, teachers will use Telegram to arrange student's assignment according to the class and collect them in a folder for PBD assessment reference. This is how to solve the problem. And this is the simple video to show how we use Telegram and the Snip and Sketch application. We use the Snip and Sketch application to mark the student's assignment on the Telegram. This is an example of the student's assignment that we use the Snip and Sketch application. And it is very friendly because in the Snip and Sketch application, they have a simple drawing tool that the teacher can use. So after finish the marking, the teacher can paste to the student's assignment. And it is very fast and quickly for the teacher to respond to the student's answer. And this is one of the examples of the student's assignment. The teacher used the snip and sketch application to draw a correct answer using the drawing tools from the snip and sketch application. As you can see now, we use the drawing tools such as ruler and the variety of colors from the digital ink in the snip and sketch application show the students the correct answer. So the teacher can show the correct drawing for the student's assignment. And this is very easier to the teacher to show to the students how to draw a better and now this is how we manage the students assignment after submit back to the students, we also save it in OneNote. We save it in a folder in OneNote to add the students to evidence. And 
This is the student's evidence that we use as pentaksiran berasaskan media data or TBD. And as you can see, all of this is the student's assignment that submit to the teacher in Telegram and it, and we save it in one note for our report. examples of the students assignment that have been checked by the teacher using the snip and sketch application so this is much more easier for the students to submit the assignment by using telegram and the teacher also much more easier to check to marking the assignments through the snip and sketch application Okay, this is the result of the research. Number one is students quickly submit the assignments to the teacher. Number two, there is no reason to lose the password. Number three, there is no reason for difficulty to upload the assignments in the application. Number four, the students respond quickly if they have any problems. Number five, teachers are easy to mark with the fine snipping tool from the telegram and do not need other third-party applications to check students' assignment. Number six, teacher quickly return the assignment after checking and save as a classroom assessment. Number seven, teacher and the students can interact directly without any boundaries. And lastly, the teacher can provide comments and motivation with attractive stickers in the Telegram application. This is how we record the student's assignment as Pentaksiran Bilik Daljah or PBD. As you can see, most of the students can submit the assignments very well and they can interact with the teacher very fast and quickly. So that's all from us. Thank you for your attention. Okay, terima kasih banyak-banyak Mr. Nazri. That was a very, very interesting finding. Okay, daripada sekolah. Uh, cuma uh, apa ni, nak tanya berapa sampel Cik Nazri? Cik Nazri guna? Uh, saya ambil dari daripada sekolah saya dua kelas dan sekolah partner saya dua kelas. Uh, total berapa roughly? Uh, empat kelas dalam uh, 120 orang. Wow, okay. That's a very strong. So memang valid lah. Alright, so thank you very much Encik Nazri. To the rest of the audience, do you have any question? Because Yani memang approach yang bagus eh. Uh, do anyone have any question? Alright. So saya kira tidak ada. Okay. So terima kasih banyak-banyak. So. Ya yeah, terima kasih. So here are the summaries lah sebelum kita undur diri. Thank you for all the enlightening and informative presentations eh daripada orang kata daripada Mr. Kuit, Miss Puan Nur Marina, Puan Siti Nadira, Puan Nur Shahida. Okay dan juga Encik Nazri. I mean from the slightest of biology towards orang kata approach in classes. It's very very interesting. And then saya betul-betul tertarik dengan Miss Nadira the way she presented the, the slide was cantik everything. So thank you very much. And then hopefully that all the sharing done today will be useful. Okay, will be useful 
in our teaching later on. I believe that many good experiences have been shared here and also good lessons are learned through apa ni, presentations of our colleague friends from every uh, apa ni, yang kata national institution semua. So again, terima kasih for apa ni, sharing the floor with me. I am so honoured. So before kita close our closing ceremony nanti, let us take one photo, formal photo. I'll be counting 20 seconds. And later on, uh, on being the host of the event, Mewakili, saya jemput Tuan Puan, doctors, please join us for the closing ceremony later, yeah, pada 14 hari bulan. And in fact, selepas habis ini, we would like to invite you guys to go uh, to the ballroom, okay, untuk apa ni, sesi tutup pada hari ini. Alright, and uh, please stay with us until tomorrow because tomorrow will be the highlight of the event. Kita setiap bilik will have best presenters. So hopefully, hopefully everyone yang ada kat sini, okay, will be the best presenters lah. Now, okay, before kita leaving, heading to ballroom, let's have a photo taken. So Everyone yang ada kat sini, saya mohon anda onkan kamera anda. Let's make a memory lah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, saya akan hitung. So, dua yang dua min, dua saat yang terakhir, itu adalah freestyle buat anda semua. Alright? Okay, boleh kita start Puan Hamira? Okay, Puan Hamira bagi saya knock off. Okay, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Terima kasih semua. Terima kasih. Nice for the presentation. Thank you very much. Round applause daripada saya buat anda semua. Terima kasih. Jemput hadir ke ballroom ya. Terima kasih. Dan jangan lupa isi link. Satu kali link kehadiran setiap hari. Kalau dah isi pagi tak perlu isi lagi. Alright. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you Dr. Aipa. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Uh, untuk link ke ballroom ada dekat ruangan chat ya. Terima kasih.